Easy, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Atmospheres um, as the third instalment on the Ableton tutorials. So I've constructed an intro uh, with the same track that we used in the previous tutorial just for some continuity. Um, again I've just used some loops out of the sample pack and hopefully you can see how to use them within your own tracks originally. Um, I'll just give you a play of it first and let you know what's going on. Some pretty simple techniques is what I've used, but they're effective. And minimalism in an intro is kind of key because if you have a really thick built up intro, your drop has to then build up to that. So if you can keep it kind of low profile and interesting, your drop will have more impact when it comes. So I'll take you through the channels one by one and just kind of explain what I've done. Hopefully, it's helpful to you. So, first of all, the way I always start is with some sort of impact. Uh, on beat one of bar one, which in this case is this one, just here. So there's no processing on that, it's just straight out the sample pack. There's a little bit of uh, reverb, I think, actually. Nope, no, it is, yeah, just completely dry. Uh, and then a pad that's a continuous loop that it's not really the main focus but just a texture which is this second one here so all I've really done with this one is cut the low end out of it headphones there's not really that much difference actually but I don't want any low end rumble because especially when you start layering things together you can get quite muddy um, in the low frequencies pretty quickly um, and also you don't want any weight like bass weight in your intro because that will also take away from the impact of your drop as well so there's that one and then a another loop layered on top which I'll just play by itself first So it's kind of sawtooth uh, chord pad in F minor. Now, the reason there's two EQs on there is because the first one, uh, when I was originally constructing it, I've decided that I didn't want as much top end in it. Let me just see what that sounds like originally as well. Uh, yeah, so I've just toned that down a bit to give the hi-hats a little bit more space as well. Um, and then the second EQ I've only used to take away the low end rumble that I was talking about before. So it's purely for a specific purpose as I suppose anything creative. Um, then this zoom one is a, I've got a little field recorder mic um, and it's 
little impacts which I've then reversed and pick and uh, sorry warped to uh, the bar markers just so it's in time. And I've pitched it down two semitones, uh, sorry, two octaves. Just to t get that high resonant uh, ring down to something that I think suits the track a little bit better. Now, again, this isn't part of your main focus. It's the idea is to add up lots and lots of textures. So throughout uh, the timing of your intro, it remains interesting. Um, and I've pitched them to the bar markers because because they're reverse um, because they're reversed. It lets you anticipate certain time within the track as it's coming, so it helps your brain to just count uh, subliminally, which is nice. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, so that's the main the main bed, which I'll play all together now. Cool, so then the first of the impacts, um, these reverse sweeps is a snare with a long reverb on, I'll show you how to make one, with a long reverb on uh, and then reversed. Uh, which one of the snare are they? That's normal. Doesn't really matter which one for the use of this to be honest. Um, if I put that there. So mainly wet, make sure your reverb is always on the highest quality if your CPU can handle it, and then a long decay time. Like that. Uh, put an EQ beforehand, get rid of, again, any of the low frequencies. You'll see me doing this a lot. I find it's really key, especially in electronic music. And if you've got a snare that has uh, an easily audible fundamental, it can be quite nice to just pull that out and get a, a resonant ring throughout it as well. But this one doesn't have it. So then freeze and flatten that. And then get the sphere and just reverse it. And it's it's all about kind of creating predictability within the track because although surprises can be nice if your brain isn't expecting something it just makes it sound out of place pretty quickly like that and it can also be nice just to put a bit bit more reverb on it so you get a little tail off the end of the other side like that or even a little bit longer Um, the two impact effects on the other side, this one, um, again, it's just a snare drum with quite a long reverb and a ping pong delay. And then the one underneath is uh, a wood block sound, so if I take these off. EQ's not really doing anything. Uh, it's a wood block I made ages ago. I use it quite a lot because I know it's pitched in F, so it's in key with the track. Uh, again, long reverb, mainly wet. And then the compressor is just to bring the tail on the reverb out. Um, and the 
the reason I've used two is because I didn't really feel that the delayed snare had enough tonality to it, so I've just laid them together. <laughs> So then without the drum effects you get the nice suck into then an impact and what I've done at the bottom here is uh, I've resampled part of the drum loop and then used a high and a low cut with some automation to filter um, the drums in just before the impact. Um, and then a little bit of chorus, just to spread the drums, make them a little bit wider and take some of the harshness out of it. Reverb again, and a bit of phaser as well. So all together. That then leads into a uh, filtered vocal. Uh, the, the vocal is filtered because, again, it adds anticipation. It sounds like it's in the distance first and it's coming towards you. And the way you do that is to um, reduce the high frequency. So if we watch the EQ as it plays, it should open up. So I've used the same effects there again, just before the main drums come in. Um, the filter drum loop is a little bit longer, uh, but it's exactly the same procedure really and the same effects on it. And then the only other thing really to mention is this uh, zoom effect thing that I've recorded again. Uh, and that I think was keys, which I've pitched down I've uh, pitched it down two octaves and then I've just used basically a, a high and a low pass again. So I've only got the mid frequencies that I want to use with a delay afterwards. So I'm just play that by itself. And again, that's not supposed to be a main focus. It's just to add something interesting and add to the predictability of something that's about to change in this case which is the drums coming in. intro drums they're in the main drum loop or sorry the main groove where the drop is um, there's an extra layer uh, of kicks and snares just to thicken out the main groove um, so and I've taken those kicks and snares out so it's a little bit lighter so when the main one comes in there's more impact. So again, it adds more impact to your drop. And that's about it really. Um, again, if you have any questions, do just drop it in the comments below. Um, give us a like and subscribe and I'll get another video up soon. Cheers.